Thank you all for coming. It's really great to see everybody again. So there's a few questions I get asked quite often by people who watch my videos. Where do you go after JW Org? What do I believe now? Well, if you're watching this, you're probably either one of Jehovah's Witnesses, or you were one at one time, or something else. <laughs> Just trying to cover all my bases here. You already know then that JW Org uses guilt and fear to motivate their members. They seemingly have an answer to every problem. They very much poo-poo higher learning and something that they call independent thinking, which is just thinking for yourself, but they don't like that. They try to isolate you from the world and basically everyone in it. They keep you so busy with meetings and with preaching that you've got little time or energy for anything else. And they do a great job of slamming all other religions so that you're convinced that there's nothing else out there. They have a very black and white mentality and they teach that all other religions are false and they please the devil. So why am I saying all this? Is it just to run them through the mud? No. <laughs> well, not much. I said it because when you live your life as a Jehovah's Witness, as I had done, it can be a real challenge when you want to leave, hence this video. So I've been through all this myself, and I've seen countless others who have also gone through this. And I've seen, to me, I see that there's basically four different paths that people take after they leave this organization. Now, obviously there's more, but um, these seem to be the most common. So people on this path tend to feel very lost after they leave. They were like a caged animal who had regular feedings and a very routine life. And then all of a sudden they're out of the cage and they're free to make their own decisions and they really have no idea what to do. Perhaps they were disfellowshipped or something stumbled them and they became disillusioned and decided to leave. They feel very scared of Armageddon and they probably still carry their blood card for many years. So they're still indoctrinated. We call these ones POMI. They're physically out, but they're still mentally in. They may return to the organization only to get disfellowshipped again and tend to remain in a type of limbo, so to speak. So we'll call them POMI limbo. The second path has people who are convinced that JW Org does not have the truth. They are what we call POMO physically out and mentally out. These ones are so fed up with religion that they just want to put it all behind them. They don't want to have anything to do with the organization and they want nothing to do with any other organization as well. They just want to get on with their lives. They tend to become atheists. So we'll call them POMO atheists. On the third path, we also find people who are POMO, physically out, mentally out. So they also have no desire to return to JW Org, but they almost become so desperate to find, well, what is the truth then? They're so convinced that there has to be a truth out there and they are determined to find it. So if JW Org doesn't have the truth, who does? <laughs> they feel that there has to be an answer to life's problems and they are determined to find it. We'll call them Pomo Erectus. <laughs> no. I don't know, let's call them POMO searching. So on the fourth path, the people are again POMO, physically out, mentally out. And, uh, but this time they do not seek a replacement organization. They may or may not have a spiritual side, but they're open to new ideas and they tend to want to research them out. They become what we call agnostics. They shall be called POMO agnostic. So as I said, these tend to be the most common situations. There are others, not everyone's going to fit into any of these categories. But um, the one thing I will say is that leaving JW Org will be a major turning point in your life. I'm not a professional counselor, but um, I have gone through it myself and I've survived. I've seen others who've gone through it who have thrived. And I've done all this research for you so that you will not be deprived. <laughs> a little bit of rhyming there. So here are my tips to uh, the things that helped me and that things that I know helped other people as well. 
But first, I just want to preface by saying that everyone has their own unique situation, their own unique JW story, and their own unique journey. So what convinces one person will not convince another. I'm happy to help people learn the truth about the truth. But um, beyond that, just so you know, I'm not trying to convince people of anything. I'm not trying to push you into any one direction or into any one religion or any organization. Um, I'm just presenting evidence for you. And it's really what, um, I really like what Stephen Hassan said, the author of Combating Cult Mind Control, when he said that our objective is not to pull people out of cults, but to give them the needed information so that they can make their own choice. So my first tip is to take a break from everything JW Org. <laughs> You really need to unplug from, from them. The last thing you want to do is to do what they say, jumping from the frying pan into the fire by joining another cult. You are indoctrinated into a very sophisticated mind controlling organization. And you need to take a break to allow your mind to start thinking again. It was a rel religion that said, you know, basically don't think it frowned upon independent thinking. Just do, do what we tell you to do. And you didn't have to do any thinking on your own. Just study what they tell you to study, answer what they tell you to answer, and do. <laughs> well, you've got to give yourself an allotted time to allow your mind to heal. So I'm just suggesting three months, but it could be a lot more than that or it could be a lot less than that. It depends what you need for your particular situation. If something starts to trouble you within that allotted time period, just write it down and put it away. So you can truly unplug from JW Org. Don't go to any meetings. Don't look at their publications. Just put it all away. I put mine in a box in the basement and it's still there. <laughs> I don't want to throw it out for, well, for many reasons, but it was part of my history. I don't hate it. It's just sitting in a box in the basement where I don't have to see it. I don't have to think about it, but I know it's there if I ever want to go and retrieve it. You'll find that by giving yourself this a lot of time to heal, you will find out about your authentic self. Who are you? What do you like? You know, your life was hijacked by this cult. Your life and everything that you were to think about and everything you were to dream about, your entire future was hijacked. Now you have a chance to think for yourself. What do you want? What goals do you have? It's daunting, but it's exciting. I just want to be clear on this point that three months isn't enough time for you to heal. I wasn't suggesting that. Um, what I meant by that is three months is a chance for you to just focus on yourself and what you want to do. Because when you're a Jehovah's Witness, they never let you really think about yourself. You never have time to just take a break and actually think about what you're doing. You're so busy doing what they want you to do that you never think about maybe what you want to do. And they say that you can get into it. It only takes about three weeks to actually get into a new routine. So that's more what I was suggesting. Give yourself some time to just take a break, to get into a new routine, to start thinking about yourself and to start changing your focus from JW org onto other things. It's more of a slight transition period to figure out where you want to go from here, but you most certainly need at least I'd say three months to allow yourself to just start to unplug and start thinking about where you want to go from here. Tip number two is to unindoctrinate yourself. <laughs> so when you're feeling up to it after your allotted time period or whenever you're feeling like, okay, I need to start doing some research now, you need to unindoctrinate yourself. You can go to jwfacts.com. This is an excellent website for doing whatever research you need to do. The two Ray Franz books, um, the first one was called Crisis of Conscience and In Search of Christian Freedom. Those helped me immensely. Um, there are some other absolutely fantastic books out there and I thoroughly enjoyed them, but I'm just telling you, this is what I did when I first came out. Okay, so JW Facts and the two Ray Franz books really helped me. The next thing I did was I joined a Facebook group for XJWs and this helped me immensely because it really taught me that the problems that I saw within the organization from my little neck of the woods was not just a case of one elder messing up. You know, they're just imperfect men, you know? It allowed me to see that the same nonsense that I saw was happening worldwide. That in every neck of the woods, 
the organization is entirely messed up, not just from their, their policies, but the way they handle things, the way they've handled women who were abused, the way they've handled child abuse. Um, it, it's just been appalling. It's absolutely appalling. So I think it's really important for you to see this for yourself. It will really can help to convince you that there's nothing in this organization that is innocent. The elders, um, there may be some good people, but the, mo the majority of elders, they know what's going on. And the higher up you get, the worse it gets within the organization. So you really need to unindoctrinate yourself. Because if you don't, then you're going to end up being a pomy for life someone who's physically out but mentally in. And honestly, they are some of the absolute worst people I have ever encountered online. These are people that are not living as a Jehovah's Witness. Maybe they've been disfellowshipped, they come back, they get re-disfellowshipped, come back, and so forth. Um, but they want to tell you that you need to be one. So they're very hypocritical, they're very judgmental of others. And you can't be happy when your mind is still enslaved to a cult. Because, as I said, they're not in the organization anymore, but their minds are still in it. So they're not living the life as a Jehovah's Witness. So they, many of them feel that they're probably going to be destroyed at Armageddon. Jehovah's going to kill them, but, you know, but they're still not enjoying this life. You know, so they really feel they have nothing to live for and they can be some of the most miserable people you will ever see. So please do yourself a favor and unindoctrinate yourself. Free your mind from JW Org. <laughs> Tip number three is to start setting goals for yourself. Start thinking about your life now and what will make you happy. Did you want to further your education? Perhaps get a degree? What about that cute worldly coworker that you always kind of pushed away? Did you want to start dating them? Make a list of your goals and write them down so you can start working towards them. It's going to be very exciting for you to realize that now you can actually achieve some of the things you always wanted to do. Tip number four and my last tip is to employ critical thinking. Think about topics that interest you and research them. Things perhaps that always bothered you or things that you felt you weren't able to look into because you were part of JW Org. And I'm talking about books that are not <laughs> published by JW Org, obviously. You know, for me, I always, there were things that had troubled me about the Bible. And so I began researching the things that troubled me, um, like the account of the flood. That is something that, even as a child, it never really made sense to me. You know, when I read in the Bible that God was bothered or regretted that he ever made man and he wanted to wipe them off the face of the earth. And then he decided to drown everybody, except for the eight people that were in the boat, and, um, and drown all the animals. I, I didn't get that. Why? And then the whole rainbow thing. The, the rainbow thing, I don't know, that made it seem like a fairy tale to me. It just didn't. That's why we have rainbows today. It just seemed like something you'd read in a, in a fairy tale book. An evil <laughs> fairy tale. So... When I read, when I did all my research on the flood, I, I really spent like a good month or two just researching everything I could find on the flood, the for and against arguments, reading books on it, whatever, okay? Um, I, be, I personally became convinced that it could not have happened the way the Bible described. That's my belief, okay? I'm not trying to push that on anyone else. But once I believed that it couldn't have happened, then everything kind of fell like a house of cards because Jesus says it happened and Peter said it happened. And, and if it didn't happen that way, then hmm... Something's not jiving, you know? But um, anyways, that, that's what happened for me. And then once I went down that rabbit hole, it opened up a whole new set of things to research for me. And so for me, what I ended up doing is I, I wanted to see, well, what is the other side of the story? You know, JW Org presents their side of the story. But like going to any court case, when you only hear one side of the story, you want, you become convinced that that's the truth until you hear the other side. And then suddenly you're like, hmm, well, that's interesting. Now I got to really think what makes sense to me. Employ critical thinking skills. And 
um, I just felt that um, there were things that I never really felt I had a chance to research. They really poo-pooed evolution. So I felt like I'd like to hear the other side of the story. So I've now gone and bought um, a book by Richard Dawkins. I, I did research on what's probably one of the best books out there to see what evidence there is for evolution. So I bought the book, The Greatest Show on Earth, The Evidence for Evolution by Richard Dawkins. I haven't read it yet, I just got it, and I'm excited to, to start reading it and finding out what, what they have to say. I mean, maybe I'll find it all nonsense. I don't know, I need to find out. Um, after I finish reading that, I want to read the book called A Universe from Nothing, Why There is Something Rather Than Nothing by Lawrence M. Krauss. That book I want to read because the one thing creationists always say is that, well, how could it have all come from nothing? Well, apparently this book tells you how. <laughs> There's something about matter and antimatter. I don't know. It's, I hope it's not above my head. From, from what I've read from people's comments about the book, they say it's absolutely fantastic and you need to read it. And so I need to know, well, is apparently it's possible to get something from nothing. And, and that's really the one thing I'm learning about evolutionists is, is, is it's like we're all here on this earth. We all got here somehow. We don't know how we got here. You, you can say the Bible. Okay, that's fine if you believe that. But at the end of the day, we're all here and we're trying to figure out how we got here. And so they're looking at the evidence. They, they come up with different theories and that's... And it's what makes sense to you is what you're going to believe. So I just like what, um, I forget his name, the Bill Nye, the science guy, when he was in a debate with a creationist. The one thing he said that really stood out for me when they asked the question is, what would it take to convince you to change your beliefs, you know, to not be an evolutionist and to the creationist to not be a creationist anymore? What would it take for you to change your beliefs? And Bill Nye, the science guy, said, evidence. Evidence will get me to change. And the creationist guy said, nothing. Nothing will get me to change my mind. I will always believe this. And I thought, you know, I don't like that. I don't like that answer. So in other words, you could be presented with all kinds of evidence and you're just going to dig your heels in, close your eyes to it and say, I'm right, you're wrong. <laughs> End of story. And um, that's not what I want to be. That, that's the way I felt as a Jehovah's Witness. This is the truth. And if, it, if someone convinces me of, of something other than what I believe in, I'm just going to dig my heels and close my eyes. La, 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 la. <laughs> you know, close my eyes to the evidence and make what I believe into the truth. You know, and that's not right. You don't take the evidence and make it fit your theory. That's not the way it works. At least that's not the way it works for me. And I, I'm tired of trying to force beliefs down my throat things that I just simply cannot accept. So that's where I'm at. And the, after that, I also want to read A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. I can't remember why I want to read that. I just remember reading all the comments about it and it's, it's a best-selling book and there's something about it that, that piqued my interest. So that's where I'm at right now. These are things that I feel I need to know. So in case you haven't already figured it out, I'm what you might want to call Pomo sapien. <laughs> no. Just kidding. I would call myself a Pomo agnostic. But again, I'm not promoting these ideas. I'm not forcing them on anyone. I hope I don't make you feel bad for the beliefs that you have just because I believe differently now. But, you know, again, point me into some direction with actual evidence that makes sense and I could change. That's what I like about my beliefs now. I'm open minded. I'm researching things. I'm trying to find answers. And I also believe that we may never have black and white answers in this lifetime. You know, you just have to believe what makes sense to you. We all have free will. We all have minds of our own. And what, as I said before, what convinces me may not convince you. And that's great because I'm on a different path. I'm on a different journey than you are. And that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, maybe there's other things that interest you, like the history of the Bible. Um, or the life of Jesus. You know, that would be a fantastic thing to research. Um, why are things in the Bible? Who, you know, who decided? And I mean, we all know who decided, but why? I think that needs to be explored more and maybe that interests you. Or just archaeology, you know, history in general. You know, there's a wealth of knowledge of you, uh, out, sorry, out there for you to tap into if it interests you. You know, or on the other hand, maybe you are just fed up and you just want to close the door and throw away the key. That's perfectly normal after what you've been through. Um, so as I said, you know, 
you may be a pomo agnostic now, but you don't have to stay one. You could be a pomo atheist one day, or maybe there's people who even become pimi. <laughs> physically in, mentally in, before a different religious organization. Maybe that's the path that they need to go down. And that is all perfectly normal and perfectly natural for them. So you don't need to classify yourself into any one particular group. We all have different experiences. And we're not here to judge other people. At least I hope we're not. And if you're thinking of judging me, don't. <laughs> Especially if you claim to be a Christian. Because the one thing Jesus said more than once is to stop judging others. So just to recap, this is what I did, okay? I took a break from JW Org. I allowed myself time to heal and to just not dwell on it anymore. I was very disillusioned and I just needed a break. Then when I felt up to it, I began reading Ray Franz's books and I found the JWFacts.com website. I joined an XJW Facebook group and this, all of these things really helped me to open my eyes and see the evidence that was actually right in front of me. Then I began to see the beauty of life and I began setting goals for myself. And it was when I was at this point that I met my, met my wonderful husband and we have a little sweet little boy together that we adore. In time then, I began wanting to research subjects that had always bothered me. And as I said, it took me down a rabbit hole that I'm still, I'm still digging into this rabbit hole to see what else is out there. And, um, and I find it exciting. I find, you know, evolution and looking into that, um, not that you have to believe evolution, but looking into the history of the earth and how we got here. Um, as I said, it's like, a, it's like you're a detective trying to piece together the evidence. And to me, it's exciting. It's not doom and gloom. And um, all I'm saying is that it's an amazing journey and it can be yours as well. So Life After JW Org is wonderful. I can't stress that enough. And uh, I find it amazing. I've met some wonderful people um, who feel the same way. And, um, and like I said, it can be yours too. So thank you very much. I hope there were some tips here that helped you. And um, all the best to you in your journey, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.